Guardian of the Dawn is the story of a Jewish family living in India just outside the Portuguese colony of Goa at the start of the 17th century. Tiago, the narrator, is a small boy at the start of the book. His mother has just died. The other people in this scene that I'm going to read are his father, his little sister Sophie, and the family cook Nupi. There's also a reference to Kiran, his sister's wet nurse. After Kiran left, our house suddenly became too large and cold for me. All its comforting corners seemed to harden, and its doors seemed to be forever waiting for a visitor who would never come. For weeks at a time, I trudged around from room to room, thinking I was now an intruder. I even hated my bed and the down pillows that had made a rocky coastline when I played naval battles on my sheets, and the shady alcove on the north side of Papa's library, where I read my books when everywhere else was too hot. I got it into my head that I wanted a staircase and a second floor added to the house. I no longer remember why. Maybe I needed a new place to start over. One afternoon, after Papa refused to build a staircase for me once again, Nupi led me crying into her kitchen. When I explained what was wrong, she ordered me to sit. What for? I asked. Will you ever just do what I say without making a fuss? She'd made a batch of steaming dal for herself and spooned some with her old iron ladle onto a banana leaf for me, then gave herself a smaller portion. She moved her ancient wooden stool up to the table that we'd recently given a new coat of bright yellow paint. She instructed me to do the same with the cane chair behind her broom. You want me to eat with you? I asked. She looked around then peered over my shoulder. She even upturned her large cauldron which had a wedge of black soap hiding underneath. I don't see anyone else here, she said, so you're my only choice. For the first time in our lives we ate together. A white hibiscus flower from our garden peeked over the rim of the cracked earthenware jar between us. Flowers are good, she announced to me when I touched it. I came to learn that this was an essential postulate in her guidebook to life. And your mother would want you to know you're eating well, she added. We ate our doll. Nuki kicked my foot now and again to make me look up, since I tended to get lost in thought of late. She told me I mustn't leave over a single lentil or she'd report me to my father, which was an attempt at humor, since she was always saying Papa was too easy on me. When I didn't smile, she gave me a serious look and said I was to eat with her in the kitchen whenever I was feeling bad. You mean it? I asked. I never joke about food, she replied, which was true enough. I sometimes think that Nupi's simple offer that day saved my life because I did eat with her, and often, over the coming years. And I have always associated the taste of her doll on that first occasion with the kind of love that never fails to act in times of need. Sophia told me much later that she did too, and I would guess that Nupi invited my sister to eat with her on occasions I don't even know about. I wish I had done something in return for our old cook that day, had collected a basket of violet-colored orchids we called cat's whiskers for her shrine to Ganesha, or simply hugged her. I didn't yet realize that all she really prayed for, and what she most wanted in life, was that my sister and I would not die young, but that, of course, was a guarantee and gift that no one could give her.